Hi everyone, what's up? In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can handle bad or corrupted records if encountered during reading a CSV or a JSON file. This is a very common interview question and if you can answer this in detail, then it will definitely give you an edge. So make sure you watch the video till the end. If you're new to the channel, then please push the subscribe button as it will help my channel grow. I post videos every week to help you clear your next interview. Also, if you found this video useful, then please click the like button and share it with your friends. Now, let's get started with the video. So first, let me explain you what I mean by corrupted or bad record. So I have this CSV data uh, in which I have employee ID, full name, department, age and salary. So basically, I have uh, five columns and for these five columns, um, there are some data which is uh, listed below it only. So if you see the first record, it is totally fine. I have appropriate data in each of the column. But if I move forward and go to the next row, then you might see there is TXT written after 6000, although there is no column name after salary. So due to this particular value, this entire record is a corrupted record. Same goes for um, line number eight and same goes for line number 12, uh, 11. So if you see POL and GFG, both are in, in present in a uh, column less will um, column you can say that along with this there is one more record which is invalid which is the last one and why is that let's go over to the schema that i've created so if you see i've used a struct type and struct field uh, syntax of schema employee id i'm expecting it to be string type because as you can see this is alphanumeric full name is definitely a string department is um, also a string type as you can see it is composed of only string values Age is now something that we have to consider in integer type because string of age does not really make a sense. Salary is again an integer type. You can also use as a double or float type. Uh, doesn't really matter in this particular context. So let's come to the age again. So age I'm expecting an integer, but you can see in one of the records that is the last record. Um, yes is written inside age. So now because I have given age as integer, so what is this yes doing in the you know in the data so due to this this entire record is a corrupted record so in this video i'm going to explain you how you can treat them uh, basically if you want to include them in your final data if you want to avoid them if you want to track them everything we will discuss in detail so before we move forward i just wanted to show you so this is the file that i'm going to use and if you also want to try this then um, the link to this CSV file as well as this notebook is in the description. So feel free to check them out. So in order to understand how to handle corrupted records while reading them from a CSV or JSON file, we have to understand what are the different kinds of read modes. So I will take you through them one by one, starting with permissive mode. So this is the default read mode in Spark and below are the main use cases. So first use case is handling of corrupted records. When a corrupted record is encountered, then Spark sets these to null. Moreover, if underscore corrupt underscore record is mentioned in the schema, then the corrupted records get mapped to this column. So we will go through this point in detail using some example as well. But before that, there is an advantage also of permissive record. So this is permissive mode allows processing with, without any interruption. Even if there are few corrupted records encountered, it comes in handy when continuous data ingestion takes more priority over data integrity. So basically using this mode, uh, which is also the default mode, the Spark job will not throw an error. It will not stop in between. If any corrupted or bad records are encountered, it will just make that particular value to null. So let's see, that, see it in action. First, I'm going to show you an example where I am not using any schema and I'm reading the same CSV file, which I showed you in before. And I'm using the infer schema uh, function here. So as you can see, if I do infer schema true and header equal to true, the first row it will uh, consider as the column names or the field names. And then rest of the comma separated values are the uh, data. So as you can see, it looks uh, fine. But one thing to notice here is firstly, all the uh, corrupted, uh, uh, the corrupted uh, records basically um, text pol gfg the the ones which are which which were without any column name those are all discarded first okay second is if you notice i have this 2000 and yes and this is string so adding a number in a string column okay, is still fine so 
this string is basically a, uh, this uh, 2000 is basically a string now but when i talk about this i was expecting h to be um, a number of number data type basically I, I expected it to be integer data type but now that spark has found that there is a string also so what it will do it will automatically make this age of string data type instead of making it as integer so this is one of the drawback which which we have using infer schema and you can answer the same thing if asked in the interview like you know what are the disadvantages of using infer schema in spark so how to handle these kind of situation basically i wanted this to be an integer but now i'm getting in string so we will define a proper schema here schema is something that i showed you before this is the expected schema and i have employee id full name department age salary and accordingly i have provided the data types so let's see the schema's usage in action so i'm using uh, i'm reading again the same file i've used the expected schema inside this and header is equal to true so now if you notice everything is same like before the corrupted um, uh, values were also discarded but unlike before the each column is now in integer and the string value is automatically made to null so this is something i wanted to achieve and uh, using a proper schema like imposing a schema on the spark.read operation we can do this now what if i want to capture the last values or the corrupt values in a certain column so what i've done is i've created an ex expected schema cc so i've only included um, a new column along with the older ones i, I am calling this column as cc and I'm using a string type data type here. So I'm reading the same file using this expected schema and let me show you the result. So up till here it is same like we saw before but now we have a new column called cc and it stores all the you know corrupt values or the last values that were after salary. So you can see pol gfg. But now what if I want to store just the corrupt record basically if this is a corrupt record then I want to store the entire record into a certain column i want to also store this one i want to also store this one so how to achieve this in order to do so so spark has an option already if you first of all you have to, you have to use the uh, mode permissive secondly when you are defining the schema then in the column name you have to give underscore corrupt underscore record spelling sh should be as it is so if you give this column name uh, spark automatically knows that when it encounters a corrupt record it will store that entire record in this column and this column should be of string type um, so let me show you the data now so this is this data frame I'm calling df perm cr and wherever it encountered any you know um, corrupt value so the entire record it is storing in this in, in in a single column and the column as we have called it underscore corrupt underscore record so as expected it stores all the three values in uh, inside this data frame so now you have a column that is dedicated only for the corrupt records so this is one way of tracking them let's move on to what other read modes we have so i hope now you understand how the permissive mode works and if an interviewer asks you that how you can track or capture the corrupt records you can just give the example of underscore corrupt underscore record and mention that when using the mode permissive we can achieve something like this now there are two more uh, read modes let go into that so second one is drop malformed it is not a for forgiving as permissive so how it handles the corrupted record spark directly drops the uh, the uh, drops the rows that contains corrupted or malformed records ensuring only clean records remain so basically if this is a corrupted record then spark will drop this row entirely when using drop malformed so what is the advantage of using drop malformed this mode is useful if our aim is to strictly keep the records that align with the schema so if i only want to you know follow the data integrity follow um, only have the clean records even though i have to drop some of the records which are corrupted then this is something you have to uh, use if you aim for a clean data and are okay with potential data loss then this is the mode to go let me show you this with an example so i'm reading the same corrupt file and this time i have used the mode uh, drop malformed and I'm using the schema that I had shown you at the very start of the video. So we have these five columns, employee ID, full name, department, age, and salary. So if you see out of nine, I only have six rows now. Uh, the reason behind this is all those three um, corrupt records have now been dropped. We only have the good data or the data which is, you know, not invalid, not malformed or not corrupted. 
So this this is the way we use drop malformed. And if someone asks you in an interview that like when you use drop malformed or if you want to get rid of the corrupted data while reading what you have to use, then this is something you have to answer. So I hope you understand this. Let's move on and uh, check out the last read mode. Coming to the last read mode, it's called fail fast. This is the strictest among the three modes. So what happens when, com when it comes to corrupted records? Spark fails the job in this mode and throws an exception when a corrupted record is encountered. So basically, um, all the records that are corrupted, if, if anyhow, even if one record is encountered that is corrupted, then Spark will just stop the job execution and throw an error. Uh, so what is the advantage then? So this strict approach ensures uh, maximum data quality. This mode is ideal if the data set strictly follows the expected schema without any discrep discrepancy. So sometimes what happens is you have a contract in place with the source team, basically the team from where you are getting the data. Now there, in that contract, it might be mentioned that you strictly want no corrupted records. So in that case, if you get even one corrupted record, then feeling it makes more sense than, you know, using drop malform or using permissive mode because it is a breach of contract basically. So this all depends on uh, the uh, type of data you're reading uh, and why are you reading it and if is there a contract in place or not. So let me show you this by an example. So I've created this DFFF and I am reading this corrupt, um, same, well, same corrupt record and I've used the mode fail fast. Uh, schema also I'm using the same one that I've shown you before. You get an error something like this. I will enlarge it a bit. So as you can see uh, error while reading file and um, this is the file path. So if malformed records are detected in record passing pass mode is fail fast. So to process the malformed uh, records as null uh, try using the option as uh, using the mode as permissive. So this is something an error that you will get. So I hope you understand how we are using fail fast and you know why we are using fail fast in the first place. Now in interview, sometimes you might get one question is like if you let's say your file has a lot of corrupted records and uh, okay, you can use underscore corrupt underscore record to uh, you know store the uh, entire record which is corrupted then all the rows basically all the all the columns basically. But what if I want to save only the corrupt records to a file so that I can you know use that for tracking purpose later on. How would you achieve it? Let's try to understand how to do that. So let's see how you can save the corrupted records if found. This process is important when the volume of data is high and you may expect corrupted records flowing to be higher than expected. So let's see some examples for this particular topic. Uh, the first example is what happens when you, you know, try to save the corrupted records and you're also passing the mode. So as you can see, I have created this data frame and I'm reading a file, uh, there's the same corrupt file. Um, I've given the mode permissive and uh, I've also given header equal to true. And so basically when you want to save any corrupted file to any location, then you have to use this particular option. And please be mind, uh, please be aware of the spelling. The spelling should be as it is or it will not work. So first is um, bad records path comma and then you have to give the path of the location where you want to um, save your corrupted records. So what happens is a file will be generated that will consist of all the corrupted rows. So if you remember I have shown you there are three records here in our uh, data frame um, basically in our file which are corrupted some of the some some invalid entries there in those uh, three records. So all those three records will be stored here. Now if you use permissive mode or any mode while reading the file and where you have given you know bad records path in the option then it will throw you an error and the error will look something like this like you know illegal argument exception if bad record path is specified mode is not allowed to set. So how to overcome this just remove the mode option from here. So as you can see I am reading this data frame I am using the same file again and I have defined in line number four the bad records path and there is the path where I want to save the bad records. So I run this the data frame is generated now you can see those three records are missing here like missing from my final data frame. So where are those three records? Well, if if I you know list out all the files in the folder which I had given here. So corrupt records is the final folder and I'm doing a dbutilsfs.ls. You can see inside this um, again a folder is generated with some alphanumeric value. So 
let me do uh, uh, db uh, db utils fs.ls on this folder as well and now inside this you can see another folder is created that is called bad records so we, we can go on searching inside it till we find the file so i've again added this bad records in the ls command and finally here we have the file the name of the file is this um, so you can see a size is also defined so basically this file this entire path this entire path has our corrupted records data now if i have to read this to show you so i read this particular file and uh, format i'm using a csv i have used the expected schema because i know the corrupted records you know the column names should be same so here i have the employee id full name department age and salary so it somehow tells us that what was wrong with the particular corrupted record although you have to tweak this a bit this is not entirely accurate because you see the age column is entirely null and uh, salary column has only one null value but at least it tells you that um, you know uh, which particular record was corrupted so use on top of this you can apply more transformation to get even you know deeper deeper insights uh, out of it so i hope you understood you know um, how to capture the corrupted records into a certain file which can be read later um, for uh, whatever debugging or logging purpose so this is the entire way we handle the corrupted records starting with the read modes and finally coming to saving it to a certain location so i hope you understood the video in its entirety and uh, if you found this useful then please share it with your friends and i'll see you next time so that's it for this video if you found it useful then please share it with your friends and like the video in the coming few weeks i will i have planned many such videos on pyspark and sql interview questions so stay tuned for them and if you have not subscribed then please press the subscribe button and i'll see you next time